Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey everybody, welcome to another Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin, and as always, I'm joined by Tony. What is going on, people? Tony, would you like to introduce our very special guest? I will. Uh, from the movie Human Hibachi, which is out now on DVD and soon to be streaming, I believe, on uh, Troma TV or, or the uh, streaming. Correct. Uh, Mario Cerrito the third. Actually, I'm a third, too, so oh, look that's that. kind of... A room of thirds. Yeah, welcome to the show, Mario. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Nice. And so, yeah, Human Hibachi, like when uh, Tony came to me with it, he's like, oh, hey, yeah, this, this movie Human Hibachi, I guess they're getting uh, uh, some semi-release through Troma. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, that's, a, that's an awesome title, first off. And every time I mentioned to anybody, like, I'm like, I had so many questions in my mind. Like, yeah, I think you the, the little pyramid of onions with like body parts. And um, right. I, I didn't know where it was going to go. I'm like, right. could, there's plenty that you could use. But, um, but yeah, so... This uh, this also this is one that um, you know, I've mentioned it to people and they're like, oh yeah, th I've heard about this one. Like he was right. having a real hard time finding some distribution because right. of the gore in it. Right. So how how long is that has that been in the works? Like how long have we been trying to get that done? Okay, so uh, whew, so I finished the film in 2019, and uh, about three different platforms passed because of some of the stuff in there that mm -hmm. they mainstream platforms like Amazon and all they they. Yeah. Kind of screenshot what they couldn't show and they told me like you know you gotta take that out and i didn't want to so i kind of you know went with somebody else and sent it yeah. to trauma trauma liked it and they yeah picked, yeah or lloyd's the man um it lloyd's awesome yeah absolutely. yeah we, we've we've actually had him on the show a couple times as well yeah, and yeah, it's a it's a really good time like the dude you don't even have to ask a question he'll just keep going for like an hour yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, cool, he's man. invited us. He, you know, he gave us an open invitation to go down to their headquarters at some point, and it's we just got to do it. And when the when the oh. pandemic is over, we got to finally start doing these things that we say we're going to do. Absolutely. But, um, and that, that's that's that must be huge. I'm sure growing up, I'm sure you were, you know, a fan of trauma. So. Yeah, it's funny. Um, all right, so yeah, like like to be honest, it's like a dream come true because when so when I I'll be honest, man, when I started in this business, I had no money, and um, you know, I had a dream. And, you know, I started making films and, you know, the first couple ones I made got signed to like lower level distributors. Um, and then this one, um, I made this and I was like, you know, let's see what happens. And then when Troma picked it up, like you said, it was huge. It was like, wow, it gives you that validation of, wow, man, I'm, I might have something that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I mean? it's like it gives you that validation as a filmmaker that you uh, you never know. You know, you don't know if it's going to be there when you make a film. You just you, you throw it out there. And hopefully something sticks and it's stuck with this. So yeah, yeah, that, that's a uh, same, same, same. Like I guess with me, like for I for years I've been like getting like music, like in independent yeah. movies and stuff like that. And one one day I found out that some of our stuff was in a trauma movie, and I'm like, what? I'm like, this is yeah. amazing. I'm like, I can die now. This is awesome. Yes. Yeah, it's like surreal. Yeah, because it's like I growing up, I was yeah. all about trauma. So Top Avenger was one of my favorites, and yep. yeah. Did so. you see that they're rebooting it or something with uh Oh yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I did see that. With uh what's his face from Game of Thrones? Peter Thrower. Dinklage, yeah, right? Peter Dinklage is gonna be yeah. toxic. I did see that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be that, interesting. That, he's like that short guy, right? Or yeah, yeah. He's yeah. the yeah, yeah, vertical that's challenge. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's, that's awesome. Uh, so um do you wanna maybe just give a little synopsis about what the uh what the movie's about for people that haven't seen it? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so it is a found footage film. Um, basically, uh, uh, it's documenting a, uh, a girlfriend's um, 35th birthday party. Um, his, the boyfriend's documenting from start to finish, uh, follows her all through the day. Um, and the guy, lo and behold, you know, he's up to uh, other things. 
Um, and eventually, you know, the, the video he's documenting is not intended to where he told her it was going to go and it ends up going crazy. Like the second half of the movie really just goes nuts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it starts off where it's like, he's documenting her, you know, you know, her, uh, birthday party and it ends up where her birthday party is going to be bloodshed basically. Yeah. So, all, all done on the cell phone. So it's definitely different for sure. So the whole thing was filmed on a, on a cell phone. Yep. Really? Yep, I filmed it all myself on the cell phone. And uh, I again, like when you're doing these things, this was kind of like a project where I didn't know if it would stick just by the way it was filmed. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Because I've done other films where they were filmed, um, you know, traditionally, like where you have the director of photography, you have the lighting guy. This was literally all done on the phone. So I was kind of throwing, you know, throwing yeah. it out. And, yeah. So, well, I mean, that, that really plays yes. uh, the found footage feel, I would say. Yes, absolutely. And it's a little like pre-pandemic because nowadays everything that you see, it's either, you know, like a Zoom call or on yes. cell phones or anything like that. And now, yeah. you know, I don't want to say that might be the wave of the future, right. but, you know, at least from last year with a lot of the things you saw, it was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had, uh, what was that one movie that was all on the iPhone that got big, uh, mm. Unsane or whatever, where literally the entire movie was taped on an iPhone. Right. And, it, it's you know. New thing, man. Almost because yeah, yeah people people, all that today. It's it's tough with the pandemic. You're right. Yeah, and it, like I, I think what it is too. Like that, I think that movie because that movie was in theaters. If it's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. You know? And like you know, because uh, an iPhone, whatever, has like a 4K sensor, and they were, they were using like external lenses hooked up to the iPhone, which still adds to it. But but still, I mean, it just shows you how much is possible. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, and then it, like like you said, like the um. With with the iPhone and you know not having to worry about uh, the lighting and stuff like that, you're you're getting more of like what you would see if you were you know it, it like the gore part of it um, right. is is a little almost more gritty because it's on an That's iPhone. Back what I was going for it was grit. Yeah. Yeah. I, now, I now, now as far as the location, um, how, how did that happen? Like was that like a? I mean, obviously it was a real restaurant. Um, okay, so did you just know someone who worked there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the hardest part of the film was because, so I, yeah, obviously I knew somebody that worked at the restaurant and I was like, you know, listen, we need a restaurant to shoot out of. And they were like, all right, well, we closed down at 1 a.m. And I was like, oh, geez. So, you know, now now you have the 1 a.m. close time for them. And then I got to get my actors there at like 1, 1, you know, mm-hmm. and then we got to shoot till 9. So that was the hardest part of the film okay. because, you know, everybody was tired and it's like, man. So, yeah, that's kind of how that worked out. Uh, so, you know, you use what you can get because, you know, when you're making these films for, you know, literally no money, you know, you, you just got to take what you can get. So, yeah, they so tell like, me one or two. I got to be there at one or two. So, yeah. And it, how, how long did it take you to film it? Like, how long how long was that process? For, uh, uh, that, that film was probably 12 shoot days. Oh, wow. In total. Yeah. So 12 shoot days starting at one in the morning. That's uh yeah 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 I mean probably about six of those were that yeah oh wow the other ones were at different locations but like oh that. yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah so so like when when they were in the uh you know when they're in the restaurant you know right. talking before stuff hits the fan was that was that at one in the morning as well or is that really for hours yeah they had to close the restaurant down because they didn't want to lose their business you know what I mean like right the, yeah so they're like listen you know you come at one and do what you got to do. Yeah, I was curious if the people in the background were were just regular people. Or... Yeah, that was all extras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hmm. go yeah. ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I was gonna say because I mean, the the one thing we always talk about is people, you know, doing reviews and all this and think yeah. they know what's going on at any given time. It's like you see what you have to do to make a film. I mean, the exact opposite of what most things are. Usually, it's like early mornings to you know late nights as opposed to you know, right. late nights into early mornings kind of deal. And it's like, it's like one of those things where we, we talk about a lot because we have a lot of independent uh, yeah. filmmakers on here. And it's just, you know, some people will watch a movie and bash it. And it's like, do you know what went into making those films? And, you know, it might not be the, the most perfect thing I've ever seen, but it's like, but you, you know, the blood, sweat and tears that uh, you put into it is, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's ridiculous, man. Like making a film is the hardest thing that I've done. You know, mm-hmm. each time I do it, it's just as easy. You know, it's just tough. Yeah. There's so many obstacles right now. 
I'm, I'm, I'm doing two right now. And it's just like, I'm like, man, how did I ever do the other ones? You know, <laughs> but just like pre-production, I'm like, how did I ever go through with those other ones? Cause it's just so much work. Yeah. Uh, and then that's, uh, that's the thing that there's a, especially now with, with everything that's going on with the whole right. pandemic, it's even harder. It seems like, yeah. For, yeah. Uh, Sergio is actually in the chat room. He just wanted to make sure that we know that he said hi. So hello, Sergio. Hey, what's up, man? What's going he's on? He's here all the time. He's a, he's the man, Sergio. Nice. The best. Um, but yeah, so, um, so you, you said you made it for like no money. I mean, I'm sure you had somewhat of a budget, but yeah, it's so, yeah, yeah. But like not, you know, but so I'm assuming like the gore was actual stuff. Like it wasn't like, yeah. with the exception of maybe one thing that was hanging out in a guy's mouth on the table, <laughs> most of it looked like it was probably just real parts of animals. Right. Exactly. What yeah. It was. yeah. It's pretty, it gets pretty gross to be honest with you. I'm just like, oh, like I know this is all stuff I could just go buy. My uncle is a butcher, and I know I can get it from him. Back where I went. Yeah. I mean, at parts, that certain things, I'm like, oh, it looks kind of looks delicious. And then the other half, I'm like, okay, never mind. Right. That just yeah. turned into something I don't want to touch right. with a ten foot pole kind of deal. But like stuff yeah. that probably they don't like really sell to people. It's probably stuff that they get rid of. That's right. Yeah. A lot of scraps, you know. Yeah. And you know, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Uh, you know, I went to the local butcher and, uh, you know, what's funny is, uh, most of the actors ended up eating it at the end of it too, because we were hungry. So we oh, had, yeah. To cook the, yeah, well you saw like in the film, they had that chef there. He actually cooked it up in the end and they oh, ate nice. it. So yeah, it didn't go to waste, which is a great thing. So I was going to ask if he's, if he was like, cause there were certain scenes. I'm like, I wonder if this guy's like very professional. Cause yeah, he was a real cook, man. All right, because there was some yeah. parts I'm like, he's just like throwing pieces here and there. I'm yeah, like, I wonder yeah, if they yeah. just kind of just got someone who like half knows what he's doing. Nah, because yeah, there was certain right. things where he's like, right. hmm, nah, what? What's funny is he was an actual chef. So, uh, you know, the, the restaurant owner in the movie, that's his friend. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, the guy actually was a chef at a restaurant. So he wasn't an actor. He was an actual chef. So that's why mm -hmm. we brought him on. Oh, nice. He's Japanese. So I was like, it works perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a, a few moments that are, are, are humorous in it too, like it's uh, a little levity, you know, like with the whole like yeah. instead of like catching the shrimp, you know, that that kind of thing, um, you know. So it was it was pretty good. So it, yeah, it's definitely out there. It's uh, it's a movie that if you're if you're if if you're bothered by squeamish stuff, you know, right. then you, you may not dig it. Um, and you know, like like uh, like Mario said, that a, a few uh, distribution like companies have turned it down right. because of gore. And it, the thing is, it's not really gore. It's it's stuff you can go to the butcher and get. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's I don't know. Yeah. Something Which is crazy to think. Like I I wouldn't think they would turn it down, but I think it was more so like the uh, the couple. You know, obviously the the severed penis thing. Uh, that's kind of mm -hmm. what they didn't want to see. Yeah. Because it, it's on there. You know, if it's real quick, they might say okay. But if it's there for extended yeah. periods of time. Yeah, and then hanging out in a dude's mouth. Yeah, so. and that and that's <laughs> that's what they turned away. And I was oh like, really. They wanted me to blur it out, and I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, but that's that's the one thing that I must say, you know, makes it even better in my eyes, is because right. you know, there's, there's a lot of people that. Another thing is what people don't understand is uh, viewers is what I'm saying is the movie that sometimes you see might not be the movie that you know was intended to be seen, kind of deal. Like, exactly. you know, they'll they'll, they'll give it to a, a company. And they'll rip it apart, and it's like, okay, do I, you know, want yeah. the recognition? Do I want the money and not see the movie that I wanted on film, yep. or do I take the other route and, you know, this is my vision? If it doesn't, you know, get to where I want it to get, it is it is. but this is this is my vision. So yeah, I must right. say, I, I, I'll, I'll give you a lot of credit for that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened was because, again, there was a couple of distributors. I mean, there was a lot of distributors that wanted the film, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, just from the title, like you said, the title alone, was, it's very catchy. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of distributors were like. You know, there's listen, it's a business in the end. There's three things that sell film, the title, the trailer, and the artwork. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were like, yeah, we want it. And I was, and they're like, but you got to cut this out. You got to blur this out. You got to do this. You know, and, and there's a lot of distributors that, you know, they want to offer money up front, which is actually unheard of in the independent film world. You know, like where they want to buy the film off you to, to sign it. Yeah. And I, I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, compromise the, my vision. Like, like Tony just got done saying. And I, uh, I went with, uh, Troma Troma's got, uh, where they could actually give the film how it is and they have the, uh, the numbers. So I was like, you know, and it's a good fit for them too. So 
Yeah, and it's you know, and, and it's got the 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 name for for you. It's got the recognition. So it's like, hey, I had this released by Troma. Like exactly, in the horror yeah. community, everyone knows Troma. Exactly right, and, and that's yeah, and that's part of the reason why I was like, you know, that's a no brainer. Yeah, and Troma definitely has its you know niche crowd because there's some yes. that that it's like okay, some people watching they're like, this might not be for me, but then right. you got you got the loyal Troma fans that no exactly. matter what they put out. They know it's under that logo, and yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll yeah, definitely got, check it out. One of the the trauma blood box, like, it's a big like a uh, thing of DVDs. Every single movie in that thing, I have no idea what it is. The reason <laughs> I bought it is because it's a trauma blood box. Because it's trauma, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm like, there's got to be like, if, you know, if there's at least one gem in here, then that's worth right, it. Right, right. You know, and that and and you're right. I mean, that's a kind of film like Human Hibachi is. Like, you know, when I made it, I was like, yeah, obviously, not everybody's gonna like this. It's very niche. I knew right. that going into it. It's very, it's very niche and it's picked up, you know, I've done four features now and this is the only one that has really picked up like a, uh, semi cult following, mm -hmm. to, so to say. And it's, it's a cool feeling, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I did it. But yeah. I think that the thing that might help you, I don't want to say, I mean, it, it's kind of good and bad at the same time. Like you said, you couldn't get the distribution, right. but around the horror community, when someone hears, they didn't want to pick it up. They didn't want to pick right. it up. They didn't want to pick it up. But Troma did. Right. right, it's, right. It might get that, you know, you know, kind of um, even bad publicity is good publicity yeah, yeah, right, kind of deal right. where they're like, okay, now I want to see this because, okay, it's so gory that, you know, yeah, all those, right. all those movies that it's like, it's banned in this country. It's banned in this country. I want to see the movie because, you know, it's, it's so, you know, yeah, gory or whatever. So, there, right. Exactly. So, so that might help you in some promotion, you know? Exactly. Yeah, director right. of a movie that Amazon refused to carry. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Quote from Amazon, too much severed penis. I know, for real. Yeah, I like, really? it on the back, back of the box. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a tale of two movies. Because the front half is like like a, tr I don't want to say like, like, like a romantic movie, it kind of is, is. And, and then and then the second half is something completely different. Like, where, like, did you get your, your like, um, like what movies did you get your inspira inspiration from for both halves? Like, because the tail end it reminds me of a few different movies, Hostile. yeah, so, okay, yeah. So, uh, the, 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 the tail end <laughs> is probably definitely inspiration from. Hostile, Texas Chainsaw, like in, in those like grimy, dirty films that, you know, uh, the, the beginning, um, it would had to be some kind of build up and storyline. So there was no real inspiration for the beginning. It was more so just like, how do I get to the second half? Because mm -hmm. I knew the second half was going to be the best half, obviously. So yeah. I had to get there. And when you're doing found footage, it's tough because you don't have, you know, you're kind of the way you make the film is it's everything's in real time almost, you know, so it's you got to kind of. um it's a hard to create a story in found footage. Blair Witch is an inspiration. I love it. And, and there's a lot of people who are going to tell you Blair Witch sucks. I think it was genius. I agree I really with did. you. Like, there's, I get yeah. into arguments with people a lot. You know, yeah, and there's a lot of people now, there's a lot of people that aren't filmmakers that'll tell you it sucks. It, no, no, that's genius. That movie was genius. Yeah. Um, to make I, 200 I, some million dollars, you have to be a genius. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I know it's not the first found footage movie ever, but it's right. It's definitely the one that I think really, stuck. yeah, yeah. It's stuck and it's set a path. Like it, it's responsible for other people attempting to make found footage movies. You know, exactly. And I, can, I for one saw that movie in a theater that was completely sold out, and yeah. you hear a pin drop in that theater. The yeah, whole, exactly. Like everyone was like, holy crap! Like at like, yeah. that, it was uh, it, oh, was, yeah, it was great. Um, but I think it was also the uh, the, I mean. I was younger at the time uh, for it, but it was one of those things with the uh, um, promotion for it. Yeah. Because at that point in time, you had no idea if it was real or real, not. Fake. I mean, I mean, yeah. you you go into it and you're like, okay, it says found footage. I'm like, yeah, did this yeah. actually happen? And, they, and they're doing like a like a snuff film kind of deal on the corner right. over here right, that they're putting right, it. Right. Or so so I guess it had that promotion behind it exactly but it's like it was also pre pre-internet like we know it and right yeah. no social media so, to, to debunk right. anything so the mm. only thing that i knew yeah. was what i saw on tv and news article like you know whatever yeah. and it, it, it all made it look like it was real yeah it was genius, i remember man, it really was. the way that i found out that it wasn't real was after i saw the movie 
um, the three main cast members were in the audience at uh, the, on the Tonight Show. With, okay, uh, so obviously, with yeah, Jay and, like, uh, and they're like, "Oh, and we have uh, the the cast from Blair Witch." Right. And I'm like, they're not only not only are they all alive, but they're all hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crazy. Yeah, but so that's that's how I was like, "Oh, like Bravo, even better," you know? Exactly. Um, yeah. So, Tony, to get back to you, I mean, that's it was probably a mixture of. I mean, I'm a big fan of Hostel. I'm a big fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of Blair Witch because I'm not, but I think it was genius. It's probably if you combine all three of those. Um, and there's another film too, um, Faces of Something. Faces of Death. Yeah. Okay. That's another one. So it's like all four of those, and I just said, mm -hmm. you know, what? I'm going to put a twist on it, and yeah, that's what led to this crazy. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> so, so like, um, was it something? I mean, obviously there was, it was scripted to a certain extent but it right. also seems like there was some like uh freedom there too yeah yeah you, dude you read it perfectly which and it's funny you said that so most of the script was in the first half and i would say when, once the cannibals come in that's completely off script so right. yeah and i told them they were from all different parts of the country i handpicked those actors and they just they had some chemistry when i took the first take i was like all right you guys just get completely off script and just do what you want to do and mm -hmm. they nailed it, and they just had some kind of chemistry going on, and yeah, it, it was, made uh, it. Yeah, it was, and it turned had, it into had some like comedy. really good, really good lines, and I was just yeah, like, yeah, oh. and that was all off script, and it turned it into like a dark comedy horror film, and that's really what worked. It worked. Yeah, the, the guy, I don't know, I don't know the his his name, and I apologize, but if you're looking at the screen, he's the third one in from the left. Uh, third one in. Did he have an accent or no? The, the old guy with the glasses. Jeff Alpert. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the old guy. Um, yes, Jeff Alpert. Yeah, yeah, like that dude was killing me. Like he yeah, was, he uh, was good with the purple shirt, like, like the purple. Yeah, he was yeah. Next the to the ball, got to the blood left. all over his face. Yeah, the one who got the blood. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was killing me. Like he was, he was coming up with some good, good, uh, good, he's, like little digs. That here guy's hysterical. That was all off the cuff. Yeah. And I'm he report you to HR and all that. Yeah, it's all <laughs> off the cuff. Nice. That was funny. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so we actually we have the trailer. Um, it's it's um, it's it's kind of the teaser trailer, or I guess. Um, yeah. But uh, so this this I believe that this came out in like 2018, though, right? But that that trailer. I filmed it. The trailer yeah. I think I released October of 18. Yeah. Okay. So obviously this is around uh, around for a while. Uh, do you, is there anything different in the trailer that, uh, or you know, is there anything specific you want people to know about the trailer before we play it? No, nah, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, yeah, no. Nah. All right, uh, cool. Know, that just uh, kind of sums up the film, and but yeah. Nah. All right, here we go. Here's a trailer for Human Hibachi. Katie, 35th, and to good health. Cheers. 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 Hey, you're more than welcome to hang with us tonight. <gasps> yes, I would love that. Well, let's do it. How are you? Doing great, Jen. How are you? Doing good, thank you. We've been waiting for you guys. <laughs> Great night, we will take a good care of you. I hope you guys have brought your appetite. I'm glad that you are filming Harbrake like you told me you would. I fell down and hold me. That bitch is in the dumpster.
So it wasn't coming soon. It's, it's it's here now. So people can buy it on DVD. Tony, you have it on DVD, right? I actually do not have the physical copy. I just got oh. the uh, screener. But it will yeah. be uh, put into my collection. Nice. So, so wh where is it available uh, to purchase now? Mario, can you hear us? Nah, it's breaking up. Oh. Still? Still breaking yeah, up? Good now. Now we're good. Right. Back. So, we, yeah, where, where where can the movie be uh, be purchased on DVD? Uh, humanhibachi.com right now. Okay. Uh, there was a, It's only a limited, though. I only did like 100. Um, oh. Yeah, it was like a soft release kind of thing because, uh, again, I that was when Amazon turned me down. <laughs> so I was like, all right, how do we get this thing out there? So I kind of went right to uh, the website, humanhibachi.com. Um, and then I did a hundred of them. Then, then trauma picked it up. So I was like, oh, so yeah, I kind of got like 30 you, left, but are you, are you going to be doing, are, are they going to be doing a physical release of it as well? Or is it just going to be streaming on their end? It's going to be streaming for now. Uh, they want to see how it does, uh, in the, they do like a year long, um, like a run, um, mm -hmm. and then depending on how it does, like, you know, for that year, then, uh, you know, they either, you know, say less, we'll do, you know, uh, physical or, you know, that's yeah. it. So. Yeah, so one, of the thing, kind of thing, so, yeah. one of the things that they've done um, with with some of like uh, you know movies like similar like genre they'll they'll group them together and do like a multi pack sometimes I've, I've picked up a few of those that have been pretty great that's um, pretty cool so that's you know maybe that's something down the road yeah, sure you know, some cannibal movies or something hey I'm not picking it yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah but yeah so it's pretty cool like, so um, you filmed it back in 2018 so you've you've had a lot of time to sit on the movie yeah. Um, Going back, like like learning what you've learned in like in in the industry, right? Have you done anything different with uh with making this movie, or are, are you? Are you yes, well, at? yeah. So what's funny is I'm doing a sequel. Um, yeah. So I, I wrote the sequel uh about two months ago. I'm actually casting for it now. Um, and it's going to be in the woods, which is which is so. Uh, the woods obviously have a built in fear factor just from the, the production standpoint of the woods. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's going to be totally, I don't want to say different, but it's going to be, it's going to have that built in fear factor of like, this is going to be more like dark, more, more gore, which is crazy to say, but yeah, there's gonna be more gore in this. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with the, uh, with the thing. If I would have done something different in the first one, uh, yeah, I mean it's tough, man. When you don't have the budget, you know, you, you, you I wish, if you had a million dollars, you could do whatever you want. You know, mm -hmm. it's that kind of thing. So it's like you know, you just kind of live with what you can do, and then you just move. I kind of just keep moving forward. So yeah, you know, and, uh, yeah. Angel in the chat room wanted to say hello, and um, Sergio always asks. Uh, so, what do you have a a movie that you would call your favorite horror movie? Oh yeah, I know. I, mean, I know you mentioned it's it's a it's a tough decision. It's tough. You know? Because yeah. there's and stuff like that. But um my favorite horror film is it it sounds cliche, but probably the original Halloween. Really? Yeah, it's cliche as it sounds. It it's it, I it that and I like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. The original Yeah, yeah, that's probably that I I think that was a lot of inspiration to anything I do. Yeah, it really is. And I like the original Halloween just because I feel like that was it felt mainstream Hollywood for the, the what it was. Mm -hmm. It really does. And I feel like uh, your Texas Chainsaw gives inspiration to any independent filmmaker around. Yeah. I mean, it's I, I think uh, I mean, it, it's super gritty. And like I, I like the, I like the second one as well. But the second one is definitely Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But it's still a very good movie. It um, is. And uh, I mean, not to mention my like I would say probably my second like favorite horror movies poltergeist so it's all toby hooper for me. Film too. yeah toby hooper all the way team hooper right but um do you like um do you like 1990 leatherface man it's okay like it's right? weird like like leatherface is uh is probably my favorite like like baddie but right. um i looking at the the franchise i i'm like you gotta go original obviously yeah oh sure. yeah looking at the franchise it, it's not there's i don't like most of them <laughs> Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's weird. I like more Friday the Thirteenth movies than I do uh, Ch Chainsaw right. movies. I like more, um, like I, I'm not a Halloween guy at all. But um, how about like, Mike Marin? I'm sure you like him. I do. Um, I don't think that they hold up as much. Um, no, and, I don't either. Yeah, yeah, they get pretty ridiculous. Um, 
After and, like uh, but yeah, I think I think uh, as far as rewatchability for me, I think Friday the Thirteenth um, wins yeah. it in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I, I have the the Halloween like Scream Factory set and everything, and I I I'm not a fan. Like I just yeah. Uh, I, I, my favorite I, one is the one without Michael one. Myers. The was it three? It's my favorite one. Yeah, with the with the masks. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, yeah. Tone? Who's your favorite? I mean, growing up, it was always it was I was out of the big franchises. It was always uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth with Jason Voorhees. Right. But a lot of the other things that I would watch were. On the opposite side of the spectrum, it was like the eighty slashers. Right. Like right, the, right. the the one that got me into watching horror movies and such is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Like Dude, literally that, that, that is so out there too, and I love it. I mean I mean, I was trying to tell people when I was younger, I'm like, Yeah, just watch this movie. It's about clowns. They yeah. came down from outer space, they put you in cotton candy and they right. suck your blood out, and the only way to kill them is to pop there. And people are looking at me like like what the nuts. hell? Are, yeah, what the yeah. hell are you talking about? And it's movies like that, like uh, Chopping Mall was another one that I just right. revisited that I watched a lot. So I went to the, like the '80s, like horror comedy slashers kind of deal. Right. But then I, like I said, I would if I had to choose like the, you know, the the big three or big four or whatever you want to call it, it was definitely the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Right, right. But but it was I, I don't know. It just you know I, I lost. Lot. I lost my like love for horror, and then the thing that brought me back into it, which had this, you know, I guess the same aspect, not the same, not even close to the same plot line, but Tucker and Dale versus Evil, where you can put the, you know, the the comedy and horror together. I like and, that. And and mesh them together. Like I, yep. all all my favorite movies, not only in the horror genre, but any genre where you can mix two different, even music too. Yeah. If you can mix things together and make a, a good movie out of it, is when it is when I like it. I like different genres where it's not one steady thing. It's like okay, horror movies. You're going so crazy, and then there's a laugh track, not a laugh track, but something that right. can take you out of it and then bring you back. Is is what I always like. So. Yeah, I agree. So I would say honestly, and here's another one, dude. Is I think The Shining is just good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's just it's weird though. I, I almost put it in a different category altogether. Right. It's like with Silence of the Lambs. Like it's that's more of a suspense. That's good. Yeah. 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 Just like a solid. Just like holy crap. Yeah. Movie. And it's seven. Uh, seven yeah, is another. Or not so much slasher. Like like obviously shine the shining's paranormal. Like psychological. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just done. I mean, it's done so it's well. Done I mean, great. Yeah. It's just and good. It's, the thing is with with movies like those, it's like okay, it's it's pretty awesome that some like you know, bigger name directors are going to like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do like a scary movie right. and it's, it's going to really yeah. work, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's good. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who get their start in horror and, you know, and some people would say, because there's, there's always people making horror movies. It's always easier to get a job in horror, but it's true. It's, it's not as easy to stick out because there's so much of it. So, but it's all, I, it's also how many people have we had on that, that say that the horror fans are the most loyal. Yeah, it's like true. one of those things where literally it's like people have yeah. done everything but horror and then went to horror and right. said, you know, I go to these cons and the people are just so welcoming. And yeah, and it's cool, so man. No, let no, me no. be honest with you. Here, let, me hear, let, let me say this real quick. So yeah. I was hired to direct a uh, love story back in uh, 2019. Um, I directed it and it was, um, you know, it, but it was okay. And uh, we got through post-production. They, the producers made some stupid changes to the film. I ended up taking my name off it just because I was like, you know, questioning what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't consulting with me being the director. They kind of just like cut me out of the film, you know, during post-production. So I was like, you know, is this really worth it? So I had done anything. Uh, everything I've done has been like thriller and horror up to that point. And I, you know, I was like, what is this film really going to become? So it's a it's a love story. There's no real independent love stories that are ever going to become anything. Mm -hmm. So just going back to what Tony says, there's no loyal love story fans. It's right. It's not well, like that. They, they, yeah, from what I understand, they they were. I think I don't know if it was Lifetime or Hallmark. Hallmark was going to start doing they, like cons. They had yeah, yeah. they had a Hallmark one in Jersey. Oh um, yeah. But it, but it's one of those things where I mean the good, good thing is they could, you only have to have like five guests because it's all the same actors in all those movies. So. Yeah, but right, it's also exactly. 
it's also, I mean, sometimes horror has cookie cutter like movies. I yeah. mean, there's so much you could do with a love story where it's like, That's, it's just okay, they they fall they fall in love with their young, they exactly live their lives, and then they come back and they're in love again. It's like it's just how many how many different movies have I seen? I can you know certain horror movies you get different vampire movies, right. but they're all a little bit different from each other. Exactly. A love story is like I can name ten with the same damn plot That's line right. with ten different titles, and it's like. It, yeah. Come on now, like mm-hmm. try a little, a little something different. That's but, why exactly. I think there are other movies that that will take that and do something different. Those are the ones that last. Those are the ones that stand out. Mm-hmm. So and that's and that's where you know now indie horror is coming up from out of nowhere is because a lot of the mainstream horror, of course, is like we were talking about in the beginning, where all these studios think they know what people want to see yeah, and they'll man. pick pick movies apart. But now they don't have any clue. Now you're looking at these. I mean, some of them are way out there, but yeah. like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, yeah. way out there. But it's one movie that I'm never gonna forget. Like, exactly. um, you know. And there's other ones that are just like you read the plot line, you're like, the hell did I just like? The, yeah, I mean, yeah. some of the new stuff like. What's uh, it like last good good horror film? Like honestly, like you know. In your opinion, I, uh, uh, I like mean, this mainstream, mainstream horror film or in yeah, like like Hollywood mainstream, yeah. I mean, it's it's they're like, they're all reboots of something else. But I mean, I, I mean, I, I did like the Invisible Man, but again, it's 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 Hollow Man, you know, it's Hollow Man. I'm saying and, like James yeah. Wan came out with like what like four different kind of films, and it's like yeah, they're okay, I guess. Yeah. But right. the one that the one that caught me off guard was uh, I watched the movie Dark Web, and that, that was that was like. This and then they made a second one, Dark Web. Um, no, 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 Unfriended. Yeah, what the hell? Unfriended, yeah Dark Web. I think I saw yeah. that. And uh, and, and it's one, one of those things where it was completely different. That one, I, I was like, okay, this one's pretty good. And then there was one, I wouldn't call it a horror movie per se, um, but uh, Assassination Nation. That one was pretty all right. And then I guess you could f- call it. Probably Brightburn. Brightburn was one of my yeah. yeah Bright, like Brightburn was pretty good. I mean, it was just a horror version of Superman. Um, yeah. that's cool. I mean, I, I I I like that one a lot. Yeah, I mean, so so, but as far as like groundbreaking, yeah, I, mean, just, I, guess, I guess I don't know, like Hereditary and um, yeah, that's good. I liked Hereditary I, a lot. I like I like Midsummer. Hereditary. Yeah. It, I, I, yeah, it, it went into that. Hereditary reminded me of um. What's the Rob Zombie movie? Um, Lords of Salem, mm, right? Where the tail, the back half of it, 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 like that. I guess it's just that like genre yeah, 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 where it's yeah. like cultish and stuff. Mm. Never really caught my fancy. Yeah. So right. once it got way too into the occult, I was like, eh. like the Paranormal Activity movie, yeah. where by the end it was like all witches. I'm like. Where the hell did this come from? Yeah. And what am I watching? Yeah, kind of deal. Out of ideas. That's what it is. So I it's like the it, first Saul. Yeah. The first Saul was good. Yeah, yeah. that's a good and movie. That, I mean, but yeah. you know, they just nowadays, like you said, they're all uh, reboots or cookie cutter yeah. kind of films. The, the one thing that uh, I, I do reviews with one of our, our other guys, the Thirteenth Wolfman, on the audio side, and um, we we watch a lot of the the Shutter originals and the Shutter exclusives, and there's a yeah. lot of really good stuff on there, and a lot of it's just foreign movies that. Mm-hmm. They're, they're getting their release out here. There's a lot of really good, like like uh, Mexican and you know Spanish. Is that right? Oh yeah, like oh, some really, really yeah. Cool stuff that that end up getting rebooted as American movies. Like there's one called Terrified that I absolutely love. And last I heard is Del Toro was going to be doing uh, or producing an American reboot of it. Um, right. But it, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a crazy movie. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It, like the whole like, movie. Are, are they like indie films or? No, they, no, they're, they're, they're bigger. They're bigger budget. They're just not right. American releases. Oh, okay, I see. So, like on that one, there's like a, a corpse of a little kid sitting at a table. The whole movie, he's just like like rotting the whole movie. Really? You would that's never rough, see that yeah. in an American movie. No, you know? that's rough. Yeah. There, there's another one. Um, was it Beelzebuth? Um, yeah. Just the opening scene of that. Um, within within like the the opening scene, there's a woman who takes out a uh, very, a yeah. nursery of newborns. Like she's murdering a nursery of full of newborns with that's crazy. Couple. See, I, I can't go there on mine. Right. Like, yeah. Well, they don't they don't show it. You know, they, they it's show like implied. Her yeah, it's implied. Right. But right. but that's the thing is that would never fly as an American. Nah, not even implied, it wouldn't even probably even fly. Yeah. yeah but the, rough. that's rough. Like it's like, yeah. like the the Serbian film. Right. Yeah. Which I, 
I own and I've never watched. Right? Is that right? No, yeah. it's it's dead. It, see, some of the movies are just like you watch them and you're like, I feel just dirty watching. Yeah, that deal. Of- it's not like it's like gore, but it's just like. No. Why? What am I watching, and yeah, why is it happening? Premise. Kind of deal. It's just it's a premise that you're watching. Yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. I just. Like, but it, it's, it's like it's a lot of thing to like to like watch something and be like, wow, that was really messed up. And then there's other thing to, to to watch and be like, I feel like I'm on a list for watching this. Like, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like for Beelzebuth, like after the opening scene, my wife was in the bedroom. I was in the living room watching it. I paused yeah. it and I just I had to go in and explain to her what I just saw. Like yeah, I just yeah, yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I just yeah. saw. If someone comes and gets me, that's the yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just a movie, yeah. yeah. But um, I'm on a I don't list. know. I love it. No, no, for real. It's there's there's been a few times I'm like, like a friend of mine texted today. He's like, I just watched a documentary, um, Zoo, I think it's called. Right. And it's like, literally, it's a bestiality documentary. Oh, really? But, yeah. It's a, the one where remember years ago a guy like was hooking up yeah, with a horse I, and he died. That's yeah. a documentary that it's it's from. And I'm like, why would you watch that? Like, wow. What's the reason that that would like right. you know it exists. I have zero. That's I can watch crazy. anything. That's something I will never watch. <laughs> like ever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. But anyways, wow, yeah. man. He's like, uh, I don't know. But I mean, some documentaries are different. You know, some of them make you feel better about yourself. Absolutely, you know, because like yeah. I thought I was messed up. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not so messed up now. But um, sorry. So you said you have a couple movies in the works, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is the sequel, or is that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so that's the immediate works. That's probably going down. It's 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 greenlit, so that'll probably go down in late May and June. Mm-hmm. Um, that's definitely going to be. Uh, it's going to. So how the, the first one had like a more of like a like a dark comedy element to like this is going to be more like more straight horror. Yeah. So I'm kind of going that direction with this. A little more, you know, it'll still have comedy, but it's going more horror. Is it still um, going to be found footage? Yeah, it's still going to be found footage. Uh, the way it's uh, w- the way I'm doing it is. Um, just a little little tidbit on it is um, copycat killers. So you know, mm-hmm. usually like when something goes down, people yeah. kind of yeah they want to idolize and do the same thing. So it's these you know two kids that uh, you know heard about the first one, and they're kind of you know idolizing the killers from the first one. They're making their own video, so it's that kind of you know thing. And they're they're out in the woods. So yeah, cool. So and yeah, then, and then uh, besides that, you have a uh, you know the one in the works as well. Yeah, uh, I, this one's pretty big. So I uh, I had met um, a gentleman named Mick Strawn. He was um, production designer on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films, Candyman, Blade. So he had right. been in like some big films uh, doing the production design work. Um, I had met him at the New Jersey Horror Con. He was like one of the celebrities back there signing autographs. Um, I sent him a script that I had wrote, and he liked it, and he was like, you know, I'm going to direct it. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. So he's going to be directing that. Um, I got some big guys attached to that, like some special effects guys that were on Nightmare on Elm Street and all that. It's called uh, um, The House in the Pines. Nice. Um, yeah. So that one's, uh, you know, the tra- the teaser trailer was just released. But, um, you know, we're looking to do that probably in the fall. Nice. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, you, so, you, you know. have, uh, there was another movie that had already come out with uh, with Jessica Cameron. Jessica. Who was yep, friend of the the listing. Yeah. That one right there. And yeah, what, what's, uh, uh, what's the story with that one? That one, uh, that one's a, that's a pretty good movie too. Uh, that's uh, it's like a, I guess like a psychological thriller. Um, uh, that was released uh, to SGL Entertainment. Um, you know that one actually landed. That was crazy. I mean, I did that maybe on twenty thousand. Uh, landed on the shelves of like retail stores, so that was pretty pretty cool too, man. You know, so. uh, Angel just wanted to, to to chime in and say the House in the Pines teaser looks insane. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he must have, yeah, he saw it then. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was the other guy that was going to jump on if he, if he could have tonight. Um, That's he just time wise, yeah. couldn't. Yeah. The He's house, one that lives out in, the, in that, in that area that we were talking about before. So I don't know if you heard of the film, uh, the fan film, uh, Friday, th- Friday the 13th, Vengeance. Did um, yeah. Didn't Vengeance? Did we, yeah, have yeah. Someone on for that, Tony? No, that was, um, I can't even think of it, but it was a, it was a Friday the 13th. Fan film. Fan film. Okay. So the, the guy that did Vengeance, I mean, they, they did pretty well. He's going to be directing The House in the Pines along with Mick Strong. So it's like a, you know, dual director kind of thing. Nice. So, yeah. So, you know, I just wrote that and I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of producing it too. But I, you know, you know, directing's a lot of work. So I, I'm, I'm focused on the Hibachi thing and I'll let them do their thing on that. Yeah. 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 So how, yeah. how, many, how many movies do you have under your belt now? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four completed ones. Wow! Yeah, and you're, start. Uh, 
2013. You're you're roughly 10 years younger than I am, which uh, just makes me sh uh, feel 36. like. 36. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm 45. You make me feel <laughs> like I've accomplished nothing in life. So thank nah, you. Nah. Yeah. Hey, man. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I didn't go to school for this, or it was kind of like, and I say this to everybody. It was kind of like, not I won't say life or death, but you know, I I, I didn't have a career, and I kind of just got into it, and it, it started taking off, and made some money at it, and I was like, you know, I guess this is what I got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Awesome. So it was kind of just like keep going. Yeah. You That's know great. what I mean? Like, you know, again, like, uh, you know, I didn't have a job longer than six or seven months, man. I was just like floundering all over the place. Car salesman. And I was like, I got into this and I, you know, like I said, I made some money and I just stuck with it. So nice. So this is, this is like your full-time gig now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's I get awesome. a lot of work. I get a lot of work editing stuff. I'm, uh, you know, so I get, uh, uh, you know, I'll do um, uh, a lot of filmmakers will send me their, um, you know, their, their films to edit. And there's a lot of money in editing. That's you know, awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of money in editing. So that's that's uh that's pretty sick. I mean, it's yeah, it's, you know, it, they they say if if you get a job doing what you love, uh, you never you work know, a day in your life. Yeah, exactly. You never work a day in your life, man. It's so true. Um, you know, and and I found the niche with the editing thing because you know people don't like to do it. Number one, or they don't know how. Right. So you know, and there is some money in it. Anything technical like that, there's money in it. So. Yeah, so that's kind of you know you know like I said, man, you don't live you don't live above your means, and you can like you said, you can do what you love. So yeah, Angel wanted to say hell yeah, fucking rip it and rip it. So there you go. That's it, man. Angel knows, dude. Angel's the yeah. man. Yeah, Angel is the man. I see that. <laughs> he is. He is. But he's, it, he's a, he's it's a good one, one of those. It's one of those things how we talked. You know, going back to all these reviewers or or people that think they know movies. It's like right. Kevin's mentioned it many a times. He's like. No matter if I don't like a film or it might not be, you know, up to standards and stuff, it's something, you know, better than I've ever done because I never made a movie. Exactly. And it's one of those things where, you know, it, it so many people, you know, have a passion for certain things and they just never, you know, do anything with it. And it's like, you know, how do you start? Well, you start it. That's the you thing. Just, I mean, right. yeah. you take it like you do Angel it. was saying. For so long until you know that you exactly. absolutely are, are failure at it, and then you stop doing it, and then you start a podcast. Oh, I'm just talking <laughs> about me. I'm sorry, guys. Um, right. but it's all. like it's Breaking like just. Again. I'm up. sorry. I'm sorry. How about now? Better now? Yeah, it sounds like it's breaking up. Eh, you're you're crystal clear. If you could hear that, you're fine on on our end. Still, yeah, me? still, maybe, yeah. Nah, it's like breaking up. Oh man! Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll play the trailer again for those who, uh, okay. you know. And if you're listening on the audio side, um, go check out the video, and you can see the trailer. And then also just do a search for for Human Hibachi on YouTube, and you can see the trailer there as well. But uh, here is the trailer for Human Hibachi. Katie, 35th, and to good health, cheers. 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 Hey, you're more than welcome to hang with us tonight. <gasps> yes, I would love that. Well, let's do it. How are you? Doing great, Jen. How are you? Doing good, thank you. We've been waiting for you guys. <laughs> Great night, we will take a good care of you. I hope you guys have brought your appetite. I'm glad that you are filming our birthday like you told me you would. I fell down and hungry. That bitch is in the dumpster.
And that was the trailer for Human Hibachi. Hopefully, we have a better connection now. Mario, are we good? Yes. Still broken. Mm. Oh man, uh, you're you're clear on our end. So I don't know if you can kind of hear our questions. Um, I can, it's I like gonna, choppy. I can find here. Hold on a second. Okay, because you're you're clear on our end. Um, so if you can hear it, um, do you have a subgenre of horror that you've wanted to work in, like a like a, a like you know a subgenre that that you maybe are I striving to? Get to? I got you. Okay. So yeah, so do you have a cool. subgenre of horror that you'd like to to work in, um, or even like another genre of of movie that you'd like to tackle? <sighs> subgenre of horror. Ah, uh, another genre. Pro- I, you know, honestly, like it's sports. I'm, I was an athlete growing up, um, and I have like crazy as it sounds, I have sport sport film ideas. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I don't feel like they've really been done well or done at all since like the '90s, like the mid '90s and all that. I'm like a you know '90s kid, mm-hmm. um, and I have ideas. The only problem with that stuff is like you know you need a budget. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, you know, you, you can have an idea, but if you can't make it, it doesn't matter really. So yeah. that's why I'm kind of, I don't want to say stuck in a horror genre, but you know, you can, you could write an idea to fit something you can do, you know, this year, you know, but if I write like a, uh, a sports, a sports story, it's going to cost three, four, $5 million. You know, well, when you get there, kinda, it's like purgatory I, with that stuff, man. Yeah. When, when you, know, you get there, it would be cool to maybe even see like a, um, a, a horror sports movie. I don't know. That'd be cool. I don't you know if that's doable. Like that. You you could be the first, right? That's right. Horror yeah. Scene, yeah. You know what? That, I would you actually know? say Mighty Ducks might be that. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, have a yeah. have a hockey slasher movie where Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool, man. And well that's what uh that's what uh Hollison's about. That's I mean true. they yeah, try yeah, to yeah, make yeah. the uh they're trying to make the uh goalie like right. slasher that's yeah, they, the slasher uh, thing, slasher. But, right? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you know, listen, if you got all the money in the world, you can do whatever you want. But you know, when you're when you're stuck in the, you know, where you, you got X amount of dollars and you got a screenplay, hmm. let's go hard, man. Yeah. Like, have you tried? Fans. Have you done um, like, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Crowdfunding or anything along no. those lines? So I did that when I first got into it. I did that, or I think I made a thousand dollars, and I was like, yeah. Uh, it's tough, man. You uh, again, you gotta have either a a budget to do that stuff. Crowdfunding. So believe it or not, a lot of the filmmakers I know they're spending three or four thousand just to make that video for crowdfunding. Yeah. Or they're paying somebody. So a lot of times they'll hire somebody to do it, and they're yeah. taking a big cut. So and it might not even work out. So it's like you know I've tried it, and you know I might have made a thousand dollars. Yeah, there's a few filmmakers out there that uh that they're like yeah, I, it's a full time job. Like, it is. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Like. I, like. I. Like. Some of the campaigns are really cool, but at the same time, too, it's like, all right, you're spending yeah. all of your time. Right. Yeah. Doing the cool things for everybody, but you're not working on the movie, and that's what. That's we all right. Do. Yeah. You're totally off where you need to go, and it's like. Right. Yeah. Sometimes so, I mean, there was uh when they were going to be doing a sequel to Pieces of Talent, Joe Stoffer had a, um, a crowdfunding thing for that, and like they were literally like sending you letters every every month, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm you know, like uh, with a story that you were like almost following. And it's like, right. it's like, uh, this is a, uh, this is a lot. And you should it's just a lot. make a movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just make like movie. a full-time job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, um, um, yeah. You know, and if you do like a half-assed one, you, you, you know, you might make a thousand or 2000. It's really just, you know, then at that point it seems like you're not, I don't want to say begging for money, but I don't know. It's just, I'd rather just write a script for 10 or 15 grand and make it, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. it. I mean, I, you know, a lot of filmmakers are different. They, I mean, Dude, I, you know how many people come to me and be like, listen, I need a million dollars for the script. I'm like, what? What are yeah. you getting a million dollars, dude? Yeah. With no credits <laughs> under your bet. Like, they'll come to me and say, like, you know, I made one short film. Now I need a million dollars. Like, where are you getting? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just unreal. A lot of these guys, they're unrealistic. And, you know, I get right. it. But you just got to go yeah. and do it. You got to yeah, go. I mean, it. I've heard the same thing about, about some actors and stuff, too. Like, some yeah. actors that, like, have done very, very little things or, you know, nothing major. And they're like, right. you can't afford me. It's like... Yeah, what? it's a, it's like what? Yeah, I come across that a lot, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, it's dude, unfortunate. You put your tail between your legs and just go and work, man. It's right, you know. And I preach that, so. Mm. But it's one of those things I I just never understood where it's like, you know, your goal is to, I guess, some people to be in the biggest movie they can. But if right. I was an actor, I try to be in the most I can. 
So then, you know, you're out there. I guess it's yeah. just a different different way of looking at things. It's like, okay, let's see. I can either, you know, yeah. do 10 movies that I know I can, you know, get into or right. be a prick and be like, well, I just want to make all the money in this one that, you know, yeah. possibly yeah. could get seen and possibly people will like. Yeah. But it's like, come on now, like, like pick your poison. I, yeah, yeah, I don't no, want to say I, pick your poison, yeah. but look at people like Felissa Rose. Like, she'll do something that's like super micro budget, and then like do some bigger stuff. Like, yeah, and yeah. she has a fan base because she's in so much. They're gonna they're gonna check out everything she's in. Exactly. You know, doesn't matter. And I think that's why she does the micro budget because I think Mark. she loves the genre so much she's that she knows fun. she yeah, knows yeah. you know her name is gonna bring you know yeah, viewers yeah. into all, the. Yeah into the movie just because of her name so. exactly right yeah, so, yeah. I mean, is there any is there any um actor or actress out there that uh you're you're itching to work with that you know maybe has fallen through the cracks and you're you know you know one of these days you're going to be able to work with them oh let's see because you you do convention you've you've you're a convention guy at some point too right yeah, i am yeah yeah uh you know it's funny honestly i think you can probably coax charlie sheen to get into something Really? Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. It sounds as big as he is. Mm -hmm. and I'm not even a fan. I yeah. but the name is big. I really yeah. feel like I feel like the guy's hard up and you can get somebody like that. Rose McGowan, that's somebody I kinda like. I don't are you a fan of screen films? Dude. I'm not I like I like the I like the first one. The first then, two okay. Then the first two, the the second yeah, yeah. two, well like, no, like second and third. third. Somebody and like then her. The yeah, mm. somebody like her. But you know, I mean it's tough, man. It, it, Jessica Cameron's great. I'll be honest; she's a yeah. great actress. She really. I want to see her. I want to see her in more stuff. Like that's the she, thing is, like I really feel like she can go a little more mainstream if you wanted to, but yeah. it's tough. She was uh, she was super cool. I flew her out from uh, L.A. She came here to Jersey. Nice as hell. Yeah, I was. We were trying to get her into Scaricon one year, and um, yeah. I was I was joking around with her because she was doing makeup tutorials. I'm like, hey, if I get you to, to Scaricon, you can do my makeup like live on the internet. Yeah. So she was gonna do like a like a makeup makeover on me if we got her in there, but we, we weren't able to get her in. Um, yeah, she's she's great. I would love to hang she's out. Down to earth, really down yeah. to earth. And um, um uh, th th like, and she's not too proud either. Like, she'll do something exactly. where she's like, you know, a smoke show, and then she'll do something like American Guinea Pig Song of Solomon. Yeah, exactly. Like, super earth, gory. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. super gory and just like, all right, she's vomiting something up. Like it's yeah, it's, yeah, 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 exactly. That movie's That's crazy. Cool. I love that movie. It's crazy. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's tough, though, with the actors and all. I mean, uh, I got a lot of them that I would like, like Jenny McCarthy or, like, Carmen Electra. She goes to the cons. Yeah. I, I, I think I messaged Carmen Electra, and, like, uh, I think she messaged me back. It was on Instagram. She actually got back to me. Somebody like that, you could probably snag, but you need money. Again, you need, like, that, that budget yeah. behind it. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the hardest part as an indie filmmaker, man. So like, Yeah. You know? Yeah, but, All but you gotta do is keep on. But the pandemic and everything, people are probably gonna be like. Yeah, that's a, you're work. right. You're right. You're right. So it kind of works in the favor of the indie filmmaker. Yeah. Because the Hollywood but, kind of shut down almost. You know? Right. So. But it's also one of those things. All you gotta keep on doing is putting out good content, and that's then it, you know, get your name out there, and it's like, oh, I've seen that. I've heard yeah, of that. Exactly. I've done that. Because there's a lot of people like I've seen David Arquette in a lot of movies now that I've you know. You didn't think I'd see him in or, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Corey so Nicholas Cage. Sergio's reminding me that it's 10. Thank you, Sergio, the human uh, <laughs> watch. Um, but uh, yeah, so we got to wrap things up. So uh, where can people uh, go to check out your stuff? Like, you know, so humanhibachi.com is where they can go to get the, the yeah, DVD. So right? you can get the DVD on there. Um, February 1st, it actually releases the Troma now. It's called Zetzer uh, Troma. The streaming Twitter. service. Yeah, yeah, that's our on-demand platform. So that's February 1st. Uh, you can find Human Hibachi on there. Uh, the listing is um, uh, it's currently on, let me just think, hold on, uh, Amazon Prime and what's that called? Tubi TV? Tubi? Oh, Tubi's great. Tubi's yeah, Tubi's great. awesome. Tubi's yeah. really cool, man. And it's like you get the ads, but, you know, you get any movie you want. From what, from what we're told by uh, another filmmaker, he's making more money off of Tubi than he's made off of anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, you make a lot. Of, yeah, exactly. Because everybody, so, anybody and everybody can get it. Right. And there's no membership. You just sign up. You yep. download the app and watch any movie you want. Yep, I have it on everything that, so it, that cool. streams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, and, and then uh, like social media, like Instagram and stuff, you have an Instagram for yeah. So uh, social media, uh, Mario Sarita the third. I have a, a fan page on there, and then um, Human Hibachi is at Human Hibachi or at Human Hibachi. Nice. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it, man. Cool. And Tony, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Tony Has Nine Fingers on YouTube, where I do uh, movie reviews, unboxings. I show off my collection and everything inside and out of it. Uh, I always say Tony has nine fingers on Twitter, but I hardly ever use it. Tony's movies on Instagram, where I show off the movies behind me. And of course here every Tuesday on the wicked horror show, Kevin. Uh, yep. A knuckle on Instagram. Uh, you can also, uh, find me obviously here, uh, on Tuesday nights. I'm also doing uh, reviews with the 13th Wolfman on the audio side. Also part of Black and White Fright and Secret Underground Hideout that are all on the network. And also, if you go over to Tee Public and do a search for Wicked Horror Show, you could help out the show a little bit by buying a T-shirt, maybe like a, a cool uh, coffee mug where you can I drink. I might buy one of them, man. I, I need coffee mugs all the time. Yeah, so. and you can just <laughs> the grounds and uh, fill it up. And uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun too, Hell right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's about that. Thanks for listening and uh, have a good one. Goodbye. Thanks for having me, guys. Mm-hmm.